Welcome everyone to the fourth video in the series here in chapter 15 talking about chemical equilibria. In this video we're going to talk about uh, something called the reaction quotient uh, as well as talk about ice tables um, and the relevance of those things to trying to solve problems with chemical equilibria and trying to determine when things reach equilibrium. Okay. So, so before we talk about the reaction quotients, first I want to just mention right, that the magnitude of K does tell us something about the chemical reaction. Okay? So if K itself is a very large number, right, that's indicated here by saying it's much greater than one, right? So it's a very, very large number. Okay? That means that this reaction favors products, right? Because again, if you think about our equilibrium constant, right, K is the concentration of products over the concentration of reactants, right? So if, pro so if products are significantly more favored than reactants, right, that ratio will be a large number, right? Because my uh, numerator will be significantly larger than my denominator, okay? But if K is much, much, much smaller than one, you know, like one times 10 to the minus five or something like that, right? A very small number, right? K is never gonna be negative, right? Because you can't have negative concentrations and things like that, right? But, but K can be much smaller than one, okay? Um, and if K is significantly smaller than one, right? That's telling us the equilibrium is favoring the reactants, not the products, right? Because again, if I think about my equilibrium constant, right? Um, the reactants are in the denominator, so if I have a lot of reactants and very little products, I will have a very small number in that ratio of products over reactants. Okay? So the size of K can tell us whether or not our reaction favors products and whether or not it favors reactants. Okay. Now, <clears throat> right, let's talk about the reaction quotient Q. Okay? The expression for Q is the exact same thing as the expression for K, right? So, right, if I have some general chemical reaction, A plus B going to C plus D, where their stoichiometric coefficients are A, B, C, and D, right? Then the reaction quotient Q is the exact same expression as the reaction quotient, uh, or as the equilibrium constant K, right? Where it's concentration of the products over the reactants raised their stoichiometric coefficients, okay? But the main difference between Q and K is Q, we will use values when plugging in for Q that are not equilibrium values, which means Q, right, Q isn't just some like predefined number for a reaction, right? Q is just, let's take our equilibrium constant expression and plug in concentrations that I currently have in my reaction and see what that comes out to be, okay? Now, K itself, right, has a very specific number, right? For a given chemical reaction, K, the equilibrium constant, is a certain number, Right? and it does not matter what your initial concentrations were of reactants products, right? But Q, right, is just some number that depends on what the current concentrations are of reactants and products, okay? And the size of Q relative to K will tell us how our reaction is gonna reach equilibrium, okay? Because every reaction is going to eventually reach equilibrium, okay? Um, it just depends on how long it takes to get there. Right. So for example, right, I have the same kind of reaction, right, my reaction quotient Q, right? If Q happens to be the exact same number as K, right, let's say K is 125, right, and you plug in your concentrations of products and reactants to calculate Q, and you get 125, well, you know the reaction is at equilibrium, right? Because if, if the concentrations have the ratio to give you the equilibrium constant, that is telling you the reaction is at equilibrium, okay? So if Q is the same value as K, you're at equilibrium. If Q is less than K, right, right, what that's telling you is Q is a smaller number, right, which means I have a lot more stuff in the denominator here, right, which in my denominator are my reactants, right? So that's telling me I got too many reactants, not enough products, so the reaction is going to go to the right, it's going to go in the forward direction, right, um, for this chemical reaction. Now, if Q happens to be greater than K, right, then in that case, I have a lot of products, right? Q is greater than K, that's implying there's a lot of stuff in the numerator compared to the denominator. So I've got too many products, right? So in order to reach equilibrium, the reaction has to use up some of those products to form the reactants. 
So your action is going to go in the reverse direction or go to the left. Yeah. Right? Now, <clears throat> in order to determine how much the concentrations have to change to reach equilibrium, we're going to use things called ice charts. Okay? Um, these ice charts are designed as a, just a kind of a bookkeeping tool to help us figure out what, are, what, what happens to our concentrations in order to reach equilibrium. Okay? So for using an ice chart, right, these are going to be used to solve equilibrium problems. Okay? If you've got an equilibrium problem, most likely you're going to have to use an ice chart. Right? We've got to use our balanced chemical reaction. And then what we do, right, let's say I have a chemical reaction A going to B. Right? I write out ice here. Right? I'm gonna, I is going to be the initial concentration. So let's say it's 0 for B and like 1 molar for A. Right? C is some change in concentration, and then E is the equilibrium value. Okay. Often we don't know what that change is, and so our change is going to be something I'm going to call it X here. So I'm going to lose some amount of A, and I'm going to gain some amount of B. Right. So equilibrium is just the sum of the initial and the change. So it's going to be one minus X here, and it's going to be X here. And so those are the equilibrium concentrations of my reactants and products. And then I can use my equilibrium constant, which is K equals concentration of B over the concentration of A, to then try to solve for X. Okay? Right? So again, right, just to reiterate it, right, we write balance reaction, okay? We're going to write out this ice chart. We're going to fill in whatever values we know. We're often going to have some unknown change. So we're going to, you know, lose some amount of reactants and gain some amount of products. Maybe lose some amount of products against some reactants, right? Often you just start with just reactants or just products, so it's obvious which way the direction is going. But if it's not, we can calculate Q, right, given our initial concentrations, and determine is Q greater than K or Q less than K to determine whether or not we're going to be forming reactants or we're going to be forming products, okay? Right? And then we're going to do change things, and it's going to change by some amount X, okay? Now notice, right, if I have a chemical reaction, let's say 2A going to B, right? Got my ice chart here, right? Let's say I start off with one and zero again, right? Well, here the change for A is gonna be two times X, and change for B is just gonna be plus X, okay? So I'm gonna have one minus two X, and X here is the equivalent values, right? And this two comes from the stoichiometric coefficient in front of A, okay? So a multiplier changes by the stoichiometric coefficients in the balanced chemical reaction, right? And we got to make sure we're subtracting, right, and adding on opposite sides, right? That I, if I'm subtracting reactants, I'm adding to products. If I'm subtracting products, add to the reactants, right? And then the equilibrium value, right, is just the sum of the initial and the change, okay? And that's how we'll set up and create these ice tables, okay, which again are used for equilibrium problems. And in class, we'll do plenty of examples of these things so we get lots of practice with it.